Hi, I'm Jason, and welcome to the Pattern to Print channel. Today, I have one of the neatest things that I've ever really done with 3D printing, and that is fully 3D printed color lithophanes. Now, lithophanes have been around pretty much in 3D printing as long as there has been 3D printing, and they're really kind of cool just as they are normally. And hold on, and I need to kind of pull this really close to the camera, but you can see that they're really highly detailed and they really come out well in your 3D printer. But what I wanted to do was to create lithophanes that were full color. And so using layers of cyan, magenta, yellow, and white, and replacing the white backing that is the base of the lithophane, I can get a full color lithophane. So hold on a second as I switch this out. As you can see, we now have a full color lithophane. So, if you want to know how to do this for yourself, stick around and I'll show you how. And welcome back. The first question people usually ask is how in the world can you get so many colors out of a 3D print? And what came to me a while ago is when I was at work one day, I was at a copy machine and I could see that, you know, what, what goes into a toner for a copy is just cyan, magenta, yellow on white paper. And so I thought if there was some way I could use just those four filaments, how could I create a full color lithophane? And then I thought back to when I was a little kid, you would have like, I don't know, in kindergarten, you'd have like certain colors and they were like kind of these clear things. And then if you overlap them, you could get different colors depending on, you know, how you overlap them. And so I thought, okay, why don't I take the part of the lithophane that's the base and replace that white base and replace it with layers, really thin layers of cyan, magenta, yellow, and white to get those colors. And so what I've done in the lithophane is I have five different layers of colors. And these match up with the colors in the, in the print. And if you look at them really closely, you can see that they seem really pixelated. But the cool thing about the lithophane is that once you print the lithophane on top of it, it kind of blends the colors together. So what the lithophane also does is with those five layers, you get about 600 unique colors. But once you get the thickness of the lithophane on top of it, it ends up getting more close to about 20,000 unique colors that you can get into a single lithophane only using four filaments as input. So what do you need to make these color lithophanes? Well, obviously you need a 3D printer. In addition to that, something that's really helpful is to have some sort of multi-material uh, device. So I'm using a mosaic palette which can take four filaments in and produce a single stream out, so you can use four different colors in the same print. Now, I don't use a Prusa MMU, but there's really no reason why it couldn't be done, and I have seen examples done with the 3D, uh, the 3D Chameleon, so pretty much any uh, multi-material you can probably use. Now, if you don't have one of those and you have some patience, it's only 16 different filament changes, so you could actually do it without one of these, but it would take a little bit of work. But they look pretty cool and it might be worth it. So then, now that you have uh, one of these multi-material things, you need uh, the software to create the STL files. Unfortunately, lithophanemaker.com is the soft, is an online free tool that you can use to create the files you need. And I'm gonna go back to that in just a moment. What you also need is the proper filament. Obviously, to, um, to create those little things, you need a good pure cyan, magenta, yellow, and white. And fortunately, Printed Solid has recently come out with exactly that. And uh, it, these filaments work phenomenally well. So the first step that you need to do when you want to make color lithophanes is obviously first you need, you need an image that you want to turn into a color lithophane. But after that, you need to go to lithophanemaker.com, which has the tool to make these. Now, when you go on your website, you'll have to, they're on their website, you'll have to scroll down a little bit to find the color lithophane tool. 
Now, when you're on that page, he has an embedded, he has a video on that page, and it does a pretty good job explaining how to use the tool. So I don't want to go through every single thing in this video on it because it, it does a good job. But there are a few things that I kind of want to emphasize or that are really important to note. Uh, the first thing is the colored resolution. And what that is, is sort of the size of those pixels that I was showing you earlier. And you want these pixels to be as small as they possibly can. And what that means is, is you want to make that square as small as possible. And that is completely dependent on your extrusion width. So for me, I have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I print 0.4 mil, the extrusion width is 0.4 millimeters wide. And so what you want to do is double it. So for me, that resolution I use is 0.8. Now, if you use a 0.45 um, width, uh, extrusion width, well, then you need to make those squares 0.9 millimeters. So obviously, if you, the smaller your print head is, the more uh, kind of detail you can get. Um, so that's what that is, is. And you really do want to match it up to uh, to get a really precise match. The other, um, the next thing that's important is the layer height, and that is the layer height of the color portion. And you want this to be pretty thin. I do it at 0 0.08 millimeters, and the reason why you want it thin is, first of all, the color blocks more light than the white um, lithophane part is. And so the thicker the colors are, you're going to end up having to give up some of the resolution of the lithophane if you make them too thick. So if you make them really thin, it, it does really well. Um, and it also, if you make them too thick, that kind of means the top lithophane, again, needs to be thinner. And then um, sometimes the color can bleed through even when you're not having the light behind it. And it just looks a little better if you can have kind of more of a, more of the lithophane part being thicker as, as, as it can. Now the other um, important thing is the first layer height. And when I first did the uh, um, lithophanes at, color lithophanes at MRF last year, in fact, I think you might recognize this little box that I had the, the tulips in, um, I printed the, the colors directly on my build plate and it was really tricky. A lot of times those little squares wanted to peel up. And so Thomas over at Lithophane Maker you know, so I suggested, well, why don't you do one layer of white first, and that'll give it a good, uh, good, um, the color is something to bind to. And that works really, really well. It, it, the really made it a lot more, a higher success rate. But you don't want this layer to be too thick, because again, the, the more you have on the bottom, the less white you have available on the top. So I typically do about twice the thickness of my color layer. So if I'm doing 0 0.08 color layer, I'll do it at 0.16. And that, that seems to work pretty well. Now the final thing that is really important on this tool is um, the select palette area. And so there are several different filament uh, choices here. And these all have specific color palettes. So it's really important that you choose the correct color palette for the colors you have. And so if you're using the printed solid uh, filament, then you need to do choice number four, which is the printed solid. And that means that it's gonna match up, the, the STLs that are created are gonna be matched up to the colors that you're using. And that's really important. So once you have the uh, STL files created and downloaded, then you need to put it through your slicing program. Now I use Simplify 3D just because I, I've used it for a while and it, it works pretty well with um, with multi, you know, having a pal and having to choose different tools. But I know Cura and Prusa Slicer, all of these these other slicers can can work just fine. But all of them have have settings that you need to be very careful with. So I had mentioned before the extrusion width. And again, it's important that you set that extrusion width to be manual. You don't want it, you know, having the slicer choose the extrusion width because then you don't know if it's going to match up what the size of the pixels are. And so that's the most important thing up front. And then, of course, you need your layer heights in the slicer to match the layer heights that you chose in the selection on lithophanemaker.com. So if you chose 0 0.08 layer height for the color layers, then you need to make sure that those color layers are sliced at that thickness. Now, once you get past those color layers, you can do um, the lithophane part itself, you can do at different different thicknesses. In fact, since we have to print these flat because of the thinness of the color, um, color squares, 
I like to really make my lithophane uh, slicing really thin. So the lithophane part, I actually print at 0.05 uh, millimeters. Um, and that really um, makes the, the lithophane uh, really a high quality and really kind of close to matching what you do when you have them printed um, standing up. And I have gotten a lot of comments like, well, you know, you print it flat and you're really losing a lot, a lot of resolution. And again, with the really thin layers, I'm not seeing really any measurable loss of of resolution, but if you're really insistent on printing lithophane standing up, then you can make it two prints. Print the color section flat, and then print the uh, the lithophane part standing up, and then, you know, just sort of put them together, assemble them. Now, another thing that I've kind of learned uh, making a lot of these color lithophanes is that, especially with the printing them flat, you don't want to over extrude. It's really, really important not to over extrude. So I actually back it off a little bit and even maybe under extrude just a little bit because if you over extrude, you're gonna have one of two problems or maybe both happen. One is that you're gonna get the hot end jammed because you're extruding too much and there's not any space for the extra filament to go. The second is if you over extrude the, the lithophanes when they're flat is it kind of looks like they're melted or, or smeared. So again, if, if, you, if you're going to err on one side or the other, I would definitely err on under extrusion and then kind of dial it up from there if, if you've kind of gone too far with that. The other really important thing when you're slicing this is always check your, uh, your preview. Your preview should look something like this, where basically you see a lot of squares and there's no little empty pockets. If there's little empty pockets, it probably means that your extrusion width is not lined up with the uh, pixel size that you set in, litho in lithophane maker. So alter one of those two so you get something that lines up or you're going to have little holes and it's not just going to look exactly correct when you print it. So before I finish the video, I do want to, again, acknowledge some people that have really helped out this process so it's available to other people. So Thomas Brooks over at lithophanemaker.com was the one who coded it for his website, and I probably worked with him for two or three months to get it. It took a tremendous amount of effort and time, and his website's free. You can download these STL files without paying anything. So if you really do enjoy his tool, I do encourage you. He does have a Patreon, or um, there's a lot of uh, lithophane type materials that are for sale on his site through uh, affiliate links. I again recommend to support his his uh, his uh, site because again he he doesn't charge anything for it and this really helps him kind of keep it going. Again, I also would like to thank Printed Solid uh, Dave Randolph over there. He put in so much effort to make this filament, and it, again I was just. I was just blown away. I simply wasn't expecting how good this film it was and for the price he's charging for it. It's just really wonderful. I was so happy to hear that his first batch ran, uh, sold out pretty quickly after I started posting uh, examples online. And uh, it did ruin a weekend of his to, to kind of get back in stock. But um, but yeah, it's, it's been really, he. it's been a wonderful, wonderful product that he's produced. So i like to end this video. Again, thank you for, for watching. And again, if you have questions, please put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. And I'm going to finish here with a little little gallery of some of the color lithophanes that I've done to kind of inspire you to, to kind of do your own. Thanks for watching and have fun printing.